When urbanists around the world talk about the Netherlands, they tend to think of the more classical cities like Amsterdam, Harlem, and Utrecht with its world-famous bike park and garage just built. But by the time they make it down to Rotterdam, the Netherlands' second city, there's usually a little bit of pause and confusion. Rotterdam is kind of like that wacky family member who takes pride in being a nonconformist. For many Dutchies, the city feels a bit alien without being dominated by brick buildings and narrow canals. But for many tourists, the modern buildings and the wider roads and car-centered approach tends to be a lot more familiar. And for many urban planners who want to find ideas on how to adapt Dutch solutions to a more modern context like their hometowns, it makes Rotterdam become an ideal case study. It's the first city I lived in when I moved to the Netherlands, and I wanted to come back and make a video about the Hemratsingel, a street in Rotterdam that has the same issue that affects so many streets around the world, which stops them from being great. I'll be honest, if you were from Rotterdam and someone asked you about terrible travel services in the city, this wouldn't be the first one you'd think about. This stretch is tucked in between a beautiful neighborhood on the left and a gorgeous canal park on the right. Maybe some of you watching think I'm full of it, after so many of you Dutchies had to correct me about the speed limit of roads inside of cities. Okay, sheesh, I get it, it's 50. But as you walk down the sidewalk, you might too get the sense that something here feels off. Sometimes, auditing a street can feel a little bit like a crime scene investigation from a movie. And when you do the kind of work I do, just like a detective, you may start noticing several small clues that can go overlooked by many, but provide you key insight into the context of the problem at hand. My friend who introduced me to the Hemrat single described it as X-ray vision, and it's my goal to help you loyal followers to develop this X-ray vision, and this section of the Hemrat single is a great example to practice on. Our investigation begins with our first clue, which are these bits of red asphalt and white striping that cyclists find themselves crammed into. Contrary to their appearance, these are not actually bike lanes. They're actually called Suggestiestroken. And it's pretty much Dutch designers' favorite tool to abuse, mainly to get around a problem the local gemeente doesn't really want to deal with. I like saying no. To understand why, we need to talk about what an ETW30 instead of the built-up area is, which is what the Hemrat single here is classified as. I've talked about this category several times before in previous videos, so I'm not going to get too much into it, but if you're new here, they're pretty much streets whose primary function is to provide access to destinations, kind of like a longer, communally owned driveway, if you will. So, the design speed is set at 30 kilometers an hour, and all modes of getting around are expected to mix together. There are many tools designers can use to accomplish these goals, and we can even see some of them employed on the Hemrat single, but one tool you're definitely not supposed to use are bike lanes. In fact, the Serre V states multiple times that bike lanes shouldn't be installed on ETWs to avoid giving the impression that most of the space is reserved for the through car movement and to stop engineers for designing for that. But if you really want to break the rules without actually having to break the rules, you can also use what the Serre V calls a Suggestistoke. This marking conveniently has the exact same measurements as a bicycle lane marking has. There is no official guidance on the suggested width, so you can make it as wide as you want. Oh, and you can also make it whatever color you want, too. So, uh, yeah, just don't forget to leave the bicycle symbol off of it. We wouldn't want people to misinterpret this as a bike lane, right? Right? In a scheme, per se, it's... So, why did those sneaky designers at the Gemeente decide to do this? Well, wouldn't you know it, that's a lot of fast through car traffic. But, wait a minute, Stefan, you say. I thought you said that ETWs were only really supposed to have local movements, not lots of through movements. And you, dear viewer, would be completely right. So just Stroken in the city, purely in of themselves, aren't that big of a problem. They are more of an indicator of a larger issue, 
a signal that there's too much car traffic moving quickly for people to feel comfortable being mixed up in. So, if we want to keep playing detective, we have to zoom out a bit to see where all this traffic is coming from. Directly to the north of this section of Hemratsingel, there's Firum Buxtrad, one of Rotterdam's through roads that shuttles car traffic from east to west. And it just so happens that this section of the Hemratsingel offers a convenient shortcut to the southern through road of Mathenaeserlun. This ends up attracting a lot of through car traffic, which would otherwise have to use a normal road network instead of this street shortcut. This is the same dynamic that repeats itself on otherwise great streets not just in Rotterdam, but also all across the world, which ends up causing the local movements to end up being displaced and deprioritized with the fast through movement. But the nice thing about network problems is that although they seem quite complicated, they're actually pretty simple to solve. It just takes some political will instead of some complicated technical solution. All we need to do to fix the through traffic problem on Hembratsingel is to just block off the street to through car traffic. And we only have to put in a few things to do that. Two bollards, putting this sign near the entrance, and moving two bus stops. The southern bus stop would be moved here, and the northern bus stop would be moved here. This would change the through car movement from this to this, keeping the through movement of cars on road surfaces that were actually designed for it. This would transform Hemratsingel overnight into one of the nicest streets in Rotterdam. How do I know? Well, by walking 50 meters from the left from Hemratsingel to the adjacent street. This street has successfully managed to only have local car traffic, and it has even more car parking than the Hemratsingel. So this future version of the Hemratsingel could have the same level of traffic intensity, this beautiful facade on the left, and the gorgeous canal park on the right.